Would I Lie to You, the show that celebrates the art of lying. On Lee Mack's team tonight, it's the strong-willed feminine one from Dragon's Den. No, not Peter Jones. It's Deborah <laughs> Meaden! <laughs> and the thinking woman stand-up. As long as that woman is thinking, he looks like he needs a decent meal. It's Mark Watson! <laughs> And on David Mitchell's team, the most famous man to come out of Ireland other than Bob Geldof. Bono, Liam Neeson, Spike Milligan, Pierce Brosnan, Terry Wogan, Jack Charlton, and that little fella with a long beard and the big hat. It's Patrick Kilty! And underground, overground, wombling free. Uh, we did offer him a car, but he insisted on making his own way. It's Bernard Cribbins! <laughs> Well, we'll, uh, we'll start, of course, with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've got no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sift the fact from the fiction, and Patrick Kilty is up first. Patrick, please reveal all. I once punched Muhammad Ali in the face. <gasps> wow. 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 <laughs> Blimey, O'Reilly. What, what, when? I, I would say, what, early 2004-ish. You punched Muhammad Ali right in the chops. <laughs> Why? Uh, we, we were in a, in, a, in a hotel room together and we had... We... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I was asked to, to come and meet him uh, in, in his room. You were asked to come and... Why the hell were you asked to come and meet Muhammad Ali? M Muhammad, Muhammad wanted to meet me. <laughs> His, his wife was there and, and his manager, and, and I asked for a picture. Muhammad mumbled something uh, like this. Mm, mm. And uh, That's good mumble. What do you think? Yeah. It's about like the mumble in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he said, come on, and I thought he was putting his fists up like that. And, yeah. and I said, what did you say? And his wife said, he, he wants you to... to to punch for the picture. So you did. How, how hard so, did you punch him? Well, the thing well, was... show us on David. No. <laughs> <laughs> David, this is never going to be said to you again in showbiz world. Yeah. Just for a minute, pretend you're Muhammad Ali. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, I thought he was going to lean back for the... Yeah. And, and he leant in, and I went like that. Ooh. And then Ooh, I, I caught him right in the oh. nose. Oh, no. And there's a little, little bit of blood. Um, no blood. No. Yeah, no, there was. Th and so, what happened then? Did um, he ask for a rematch? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't hang around long enough. <laughs> and where was the hotel? Um, yeah, where was the hotel? It was. It, it was in, in Dublin. Have you ever fought with anyone before? Or you just look like you. Oh, he, he looks a bit useful, doesn't he? Yeah, he yeah. did. You look like yeah. him. The, the pretend punch on David was horrifyingly realistic, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> but that was all in my reaction, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Do you He's like done as much stage too? fighting as I have, you realise. <laughs> what you mean is, if you've been skill. hit as much as I have, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to call it theatre. <laughs> <laughs> it was really the only way of getting through school. <laughs> Right, Lee, it's, it's, a, it's a fanciful tale. Um, I don't know. Does it, it could be. smack of truth for you? Deborah? I think it's a lie. It's the bit when... It's the blood trickling It's down the blood the trickling, it's the detail of the blood. It's either a brilliant lie or... Or, no, it's probably just a, a lie. <laughs> <laughs> OK, my team say a lie, I you say, say it's lie. a lie. OK. Patrick Kilty, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? Oh. Truth! <laughs> <laughs> Explain the bit where Muhammad Ali flies in and he asks, I mean, with the greatest <laughs> respect in the world. No, no, if you no. said, he said, I'd love to see that Bono guy. Get Bono down. Get him down now. I'm doing Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Why the hell would he want to see the guy from Celebrity Love Island? I don't get it. Um, we, we did a gig together in Dublin, a sports event, and, uh, and so I introduced him on stage. And the next day, he, he wanted to see me. Incredible. <laughs> yes, it's true. Patrick did once punch Muhammad Ali in the face. And just nine short months later, Patrick regained consciousness. <laughs> uh, Deborah Meaden, you're up next. Ooh. 
<laughs> bit pointless putting them on, wasn't it? <laughs> I recently had my house exercised after several weird occurrences spooked me. Exorcised? But who by? By a... <laughs> by a priest. A priest of what church? Oh, I don't know. There was... I, I, was, I was put onto him by somebody else who'd had the same... Well, or the in, the Internet Church of Dodgy. The Internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what happened that made you want an exorcist? Was it um, ectoplasm or poltergeist or what? No, I just... that Things were moving around the house. Furniture was moving. I'd go to bed and get up in the morning and furniture would be moved and... So what procedure did, uh, did the man who came to exercise... Was it a man that came to... It ex was. It was. Um, How and was I he don't, dressed? I don't know the exact... He was dressed in black and a dog collar and... So kinky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't know exactly what he did because we had to leave the house. We spent a bit of time in the house and then we had to oh, leave the house. Can I ask you what they charged? <clears throat> he didn't charge anything. Really? No. It's a good job because if you couldn't afford to pay the bill, they'd come back and repossess your house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I'm taking tomorrow off. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy the joke more or your look of pride, I. <laughs> Once the priest had performed this exorcism, Deborah, was there a difference? Did it work? It felt instantly different, yeah. And things, things stopped moving? Things stopped moving. Once the ghost left the house, did it just turn around and go, I'm out? <laughs> <didn't. laughs> so do you, you believe in ghosts, then? Well, I didn't, to be honest, I didn't. And I wasn't sure it was going to work. But there was definitely something going on in our house. Did worth, you, did, worth giving it a try. Worth <clears throat> giving it a try. I would remind you that Bernard has travelled in the TARDIS, so if anybody here has knowledge of odd things going on... I mean, he's literally travelled through time and relative dimensions yeah. in space. And by literally, you, of course, mean fictionally. But... <laughs> <laughs> you have to spoil it, don't you? <laughs> You're telling me next, the Wombles were made up as well. <laughs> they, were, they were wonderful, the Wombles. What are those guys doing now? You never see They're them anything else. They're moving furniture now, the Wombles. Are they? <laughs> Maybe it was Wombles. Maybe it was. <laughs> David, what are you going to say? Uh, what do you think, Bernard? I actually believe in uh, that sort of moving things about, so I'm not quite sure. Patrick? It's true. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you saying, David? Well, you think it's... True. true yeah. And you uh, think it's true? Yeah. I think it's true. I think it's true. true. The true. team is united in yeah. truth. True. Okay. Yes. Deborah Meaden, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? A lie. Yes. Deborah has not had her house exercised after several weird occurrences. Uh, Mark Watson, you're next. Uh, when I was six years old, I wrote a will after losing a game of Connect Four to my dad. <laughs> Sounds plausible enough, David. <laughs> you wrote a will? Yes, uh, yes. What was the... Uh, well, what did you mean... on a proper will form, or did you...? I didn't engage a lawyer, no. You did? Uh, <laughs> it was just on um, that stripy paper you get at school. Oh, the stripy paper, yes. And what, okay. what possessions did you leave? Well, all I really had was the Connect Four set. Uh, <laughs> and I left it to my dad as a deliberate act of spite because he'd beaten me. I mean, it beat me at Connect Four, that is. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember how, the, how you phrased it in this will? So I think I began it, but you know, because, I've, because I've been beaten at Connect Four, uh, there's no point in living anymore. I hereby leave my only cherished possession. <laughs> I maybe had about sort of ten pounds or something. There were a couple of other things, I think, in the will, but that was, it wasn't, there wasn't much to it. So what was it about this game of particular game of Connect Four? Were you used to beating uh, your father at Connect Four? Well, I uh, even I don't want to go into details because it brings back unhappy memories, and also people at home might not know the game. But without wanting to be too technical, um, he connected four. And I sort of, <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a, a quite a built-up tournament. You see, it was a sort of best of seven again. My dad called it the Watson Cup. I, I grew up in quite a competitive family. Yeah. <laughs> and when I lost. Uh, it was just too much to take, really. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> it, it was horrible. So you lose at Connect Four, you yep. throw a bit of a tantrum. Oh. Well, you call it a bit of a tantrum. I lost 4-3 from 3-1 up. And, yeah, but presumably... <laughs> you storm upstairs yep. to your room. Y yep. You take out a fresh sheet of paper. Yep. You write the bitter will. Uh, yes. What do you do then? 
I thought that my parents would panic, think I was dead, become guilty, and what, my dad Why would... would they think you'd stormed upstairs to your bedroom? Why would they assume you were dead? Oh, sorry, no, I went downstairs and left it where I knew they would see it, yes. And then At you the time, went back uh, upstairs? They were watching Wogan, so they were distracted. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Ah. I think it was Wogan. <laughs> Young Mark Watson there, and he's about to... about to take his own life, don't you know? <laughs> First, Chris Rear, the road to hell. <laughs> How's it work? Yeah, uncanny. <laughs> How did your mum and dad react? Um, my dad saw through it pretty quickly. He came up the stairs, knocked on the door. I said yes, and he said, thought not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, um, what do you think? I believe this. You believe it? <laughs> yes. Um, do you believe it? Uh, I believe it too. I believe it too. He's a very sensitive child. You can tell that yeah. even now. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, David, you're, you're basically you're saying you I, think it's I true. Think we'll say it's true. We're, we believe him. Yeah. Mark Watson, truth or lie? It was true. true. Yes. Yes. Well, yes, it was true. When Mark was six years old, he wrote a will after losing a game of Connect Four to his dad. <laughs> Bernard Cribbins, you're next. Right. <clears throat> I once sold my wife's car but told her it was stolen. <laughs> Lee, what do you think? Uh, when was this? It was about six years ago. Well, quite recently. <laughs> oh, recently, yes, It's not yes. like in the early days when you were hard up for cash. No, just... no, 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 no. I was um, in a bit of strife with some gambling debts and, uh, <laughs> and I could only do it by stealing the car <laughs> and flogging it. I got three Sorry, and a half... Sorry, the, the studio for, for Jeremy Kyle's just next door. <laughs> Uh, I think I got three and a half grand for it. And how did you, how did you explain it to your wife? I no. told her it was stolen. I said it was outside, love. I don't know what's happened. To, where's your car? <laughs> <laughs> you said bloody one ball for so anything. Exactly. <laughs> Does your wife know now? Uh, no. So she will now when she watches this show? <laughs> she she won't won't the show. I won't let her watch this. Why, have you, have you told the telly? <laughs> no. <laughs> Glasses. <laughs> 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 no, I, I shall make sure when this is transmitted that um, we're out of the house. Oh, right, definitely, I mean, yes. I, the way you're going with your gambling, you might not have a house. <laughs> no, I don't gamble anymore, you see. I mean, that taught me a lesson. That was it. That was it. Off. Finished. Yeah. yeah. But we're trying to decide whether the esteemed actor and voiceover artist Bernard Cribbins is actually a gambler, a liar, and a borderline crook, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> it is not it illegal to no. lie to your wife. No. <laughs> What are you going to say, Lee? Is Bernard Cribbins telling the truth with this bizarre tale of his wife and the car? OK, what are we saying? A, a lie. A lie. Saying it's a, a lie. A lie. And what are you saying, Mark? Yeah, I think it's a lie, because the alternative is that Cribbins has got a very dark past. <laughs> we need it to be a lie, Bernard. <laughs> so, Bernard, truth or lie? I am telling... <gasps> oh, it was a lie. Yes. Bernard did not sell his wife's car and then tell her it was stolen. Uh, Bernard and his wife have developed an understanding over the years. He doesn't sell her cars and she doesn't mention Carry On Columbus. Yay! <laughs> so at the end of that round, uh, we're even Stevens. It's two points apiece. And so to our next round, uh, this is my, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Molly. <laughs> First of all, Deborah, perhaps you could tell us how you know Molly. Well, this is Molly. She came into Dragon's Den. And she was so nervous that she left after 20 minutes without saying a single word. Right, OK. Uh, Mark, what is Molly to you? Uh, this is my friend Molly. She starred in a murder mystery play which I wrote and directed at school. All right, and Lee, what about you? This is Molly. She's teaching me to ice skate because I'm going to be a best man at a wedding on ice. <laughs> there we have it. David, over to you. <laughs> right. Um, well, Deborah, what, what was uh, Molly coming into... What was her business? She was... It was uh, sort of eye shades, but, well, sunglasses for dogs in summary. And she brought the dog in and it took ten minutes to... 
settle the dog down. And then I think maybe Molly got a bit nervous. And... So she came up with the dog. The dog's not wearing the sunglasses. Well, I'm, I'm, over, I'm simplifying. It wasn't just sunglasses. They were, they were kind of shades for the... They were slatted, shady things for the So eyes. the dog was wearing the Venetian little handle blinds. on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Venetian <laughs> blinds. <laughs> yeah, so Don't they can go like that, that so that yeah, you can that's... turn a handle and blind the dog. <laughs> <laughs> and did she get any money at all? She didn't say a word. So She didn't say a word. She went straight back downstairs, well, after 20 minutes. And you've kept in contact ever since? <laughs> Not at all, but we did meet afterwards because she was so nervous and she just felt she'd failed her... Well, well I mean, she's right. She had, hadn't she? She'd come up with a, <laughs> a daft idea and then totally failed to express what, it. What sort of a dog...? <laughs> You'd be a very good dragon, David. Right. <laughs> what sort of a dog was it? A uh, Labrador Retriever. A Labrador, that's great. How do you have a Labrador with dark glasses on? <laughs> <laughs> Some other blind leading the blind. <laughs> so, Mark, Mark was, it, was Molly at school with you? Yes, she was. Yeah. She was at, uh, and so you wrote the school play, which was about, uh, vaguely about a murder, and you cast her in it. I you? both wrote and cast the, the play, yeah. And so what was, what was the plot of the... Well, I th it was probably a lot of nonsense, but there was, um, uh, Molly... We'll be the judge of that. <laughs> <laughs> Molly played, I think, the, um, the wife of a, a rich man who was murdered, and it was all a bit silly, you know, the way right. school plays are. I, it's a while ago, so I can't remember. I, I love the fact that, that you remember every single detail off a game of Connect Four when you were six, but yeah. ten years later... Yeah. Theatre mm. comes and goes, but Connect Four stays with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was it and called? Do you remember the title? Uh, the title of the, of the play. Of the play? No, no, yes. yes. <laughs> any title. <laughs> I just, just have any title. Work your way from titles of things you okay, know. I think to, <laughs> That'll give you time to make up the title of this play. <laughs> oh, it, was, uh, it was called Arsenic and Old Mice, which was a, a play on the play Arsenic and Old Lace. Uh, Lee, where are you learning to ice skate? Tell me. I'm learning to ice skate at uh, Alexandra Palace. Right. And how far have you got with it? Well, I actually... I mean, can I... you stand on one leg and do all that stuff, yeah? Oh, yeah, but not on the ice rink. No. <laughs> <laughs> Alexandra Palace? Yeah. Yes. So, is that the nearest ice rink to where you live? It's not... It's, I don't know if it's the nearest one, but it's the one where... Well, I'll the, tell the, the you, where... no, it isn't. <laughs> OK, <laughs> it isn't. <Yeah. laughs> But when my, uh, easy, easy. When my friend, who said we're having this ice skating themed wedding and we're all training every week for the little moves, I right. didn't say, is there any chance you come to me? Because uh, <laughs> the day's all about me. <laughs> my friends are into ice skating. So really? They... Yeah. Oh, what, what an appropriate thing yeah. for their wedding. Yeah. <laughs> They're actually going to do a routine, the man, the man and wife. Right. They're doing a routine on the ice, cos they're ice Fully skating. clothed, I hope. Fully clothed, oh, right, yes. fine. Yeah, I don't know which films you watch, Bernard, but naked... <laughs> naked ice skating isn't really big. <laughs> so they're going to board it off, so you have an aisle of ice. Aisle remaining of ice. The rest yeah. of the ice is sort of carpeted with seats on it. I don't know. Not, you're mixing me up with admin. OK. <laughs> so, um, what's your role in, in the it's wedding? It's like this, I sort of tumble and then go like that. <laughs> and then... So, so, are well, you best man? Are you presenting the rate? Well, I am that very man, yes. I'm the best man. So, the you, best man. so what do you have to do? What skating? <laughs> what skating do you have to do? They've what? done their routine, right, and then okay, you listen, skating. Let, just to be absolutely clear... OK, so the vicar comes just, first. Just, Patrick, you're a guest. Just okay. listen to me. <laughs> So they're going to do a big routine, and the bridesmaids are going to be part of the big routine. Then the, the idiots like me that can't do that much, we're just going to skate off on at the end like that. And how how I'm many... just talking to the fat members of the family as I'm walking home. Is how it... many lessons I'm, are you I having? I haven't finished the routine yet. Sorry. And then I get to the end like that, I've got the ring, I do one quick, I don't know what they call it, Axel, down on the knee, present to groom. <coughs> like this. Right. And then the groom, go <laughs> patronise me! <laughs> And everything's just themed, isn't it? and it's yeah. going to be beautiful. And then where's the reception happening? Uh, that's happening at the ski slope in... Uh... <laughs> uh, the reception's at Ali Pal Alexander Palace as well. Uh, right, we need an answer. So, uh, David's team. Is Molly Mark's leading lady, Deborah's shy entrepreneur, or Lee's ice skating teacher, David? Well, I think we're agreed that Lee's story is... The truth, just and that's the end of the round. Too, <laughs> too plausible. I, I think Mark would remember more about this play. I he, think he's been very vague about this play on purpose. He's flanneling like oh, mad. You think it's, so he, you think it's true, but I, he's been deliberately vague? Yeah, I think, I think so. Mm. Does this woman look like someone that puts Venetian blinds on dogs? 
Does any woman look like that, to be fair? <laughs> what do you think? Deborah. You think Deborah? Yeah. No. You don't think that. <laughs> you think Mark? I think it's Mark. Well, I think it's Deborah. Do you know what? I'm starting to feel like the ugly one on Blind Day. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think I'm, I agree with Bernard. I think it's yeah. De Deborah's former Dragon's Den contestant. OK. Yes. Uh, Molly, would you please reveal your true identity? I starred as the wife of Sir Leonard Onions in Mark's play <laughs> Arsenal of my school when he was my house captain. <laughs> Yes, Molly starred in a murder mystery that Mark wrote and directed while at school. Yeah. What sort of a director was he, Molly? Masterful. Really? Yes, yes. really. That's the end of the round. Yeah. <laughs> Molly, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Which brings us to our final round, Quickfire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but also against the clock. We will start with... Uh, it's David. OK. <clears throat> As a child, I had a special way of communicating with Captain Kirk during Star Trek episodes. True. On we go. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? And that special way was? I had two ways of communicating with Captain Kirk. Uh, one was with a, a little calculator that when you sort of... It had a sort of leatherette case, and when you flipped it open, it was, to my child's eyes, uncannily identical to a Star Trek communicator of the old sort. We're talking pre-nipple punch. <laughs> you do this, David. I know it's, no, it's more sort of... <laughs> yeah, no. It would open with, it would go... And then it would go, and you press the button, Kirk to Enterprise, and it would go... Oh, yes, that's the secondary noise. Did, did, that's just a question. Did, 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 did you two ever have girlfriends? Yeah. <laughs> No, I didn't, in all honesty. Yeah, As a no. child, did you? No. No. Uh, no. no. It was a great noise, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very comforting. It was, yeah. yeah. That, Are you that kept me company. Uh, Who me. needs people? Exactly. <laughs> and what was, the, what was the second way? The second way was uh, I would sort of converse a bit with the characters on the screen while it was happening. <laughs> Run. Join in, slip in. Oh, that's good thoughts, uh, so Captain you... Kirk. Uh, etc. <laughs> <you know. laughs> don't, don't interrupt me, Spock. I'm talking. Do you know the characters of the, the, of the famous yes. Star Trek? Spock. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Uhuru, what did you say? Uhuru. Uhuru, uh, yeah. Sulu. 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 Uh, Chekhov. Chekhov. Bones. Bones. Bones, yes. Uh, McCoy, Bones. actually, properly. Rob, yeah. Rob, Rob, have you ever refereed anything Scott. before? <laughs> <laughs> Referee of football. Why, yeah. why don't you try kicking it in the top of that? <laughs> right, what are you going to say then, Lee? What well, do you think? It's, uh, the bit that rings most true, actually, about all of this was when he went, I flipped it open. Because I remember those calculators. They used to have a little thing. That, There's no uh, doubt, yeah. And did you do the old thing where it spells boobies when you turn it upside down? <laughs> he didn't know what they were. <laughs> OK, so... Uh, <laughs> is David telling the truth, Lee? What do you reckon? Right, OK. Do we believe uh, David, as a small child, would be so lonely and sad that he would have to use his... I'll tell you that. Okay. Yes, I, yes, we do, yeah. You're saying it's true? <laughs> We're saying it's true. You sure? OK. David. Is it true or is it a lie? I prefer the word imaginative to lonely, but uh, <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. As a child, David did have a special way of communicating with Captain Kirk during Star Trek episodes. Uh, David particularly liked Leonard Nimoy. That odd life form obsessed with logic would tune in each week <laughs> to watch Mr. Spock. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Next. Uh, right, that's me. Uh, possession. Right. Pick it up first. Steady. <laughs> this is a prototype invention of mine that I'm hoping to release one day. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Brydon's World of Magic! <laughs> Teams? Questions? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a TV aerial for the bath, isn't it? <laughs> On first inspection, you'd think so. It's actually not. Don't tell us. Let us guess what it is. All right, try and guess what it is. Can you demonstrate how you would use it and see if yes. we can guess? Yeah, please do. Can I, can I come out? Is now, is now a good you time? Did, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> He's cleaning. 
something. Oh, oh footprints. Painting. He's cleaning painting. Up footprints. You're painting. Oh, oh. oh. painting a dotted circle. <laughs> it's he's, not he's doing I the haven't work. finished. Hang on, he's painted a circle or is he cleaned the circle? <laughs> He's patting children on the head. Incidentally, I just, I've just remembered something. Mm. This isn't a mime show. Oh. Tell us what you were doing. <laughs> it's a children, it's a thing for kids. I've got a lot of children, and it's an idea I came up with. And it's just a big kind of painting stick. It's just a silly painting stick. I'm very interested, actually, to know what you think, Deborah. I think it's Five very... grand, that's all I need. That, oh, you just need five grand? Anybody? Anybody? I think probably no, you, no, you in particular. Oh, me. <laughs> You're quite well known for being rich. Quite seriously, <laughs> or all jokes aside. Do you know aside, how you get rich? <laughs> Deborah, like that. Deborah, no. Deborah like stop that, talking to the idiot at the end. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Talk to this idiot. Yeah, oh, Seriously. Oh. oh, don't buy into that. What do you mean, don't buy into it? Don't buy into that. <laughs> no, not this. Buy into this. <laughs> don't buy into that. You're being rubbish on dragons. No, <laughs> see this. Don't, don't buy into that. Don't buy into this. <laughs> Deborah, what do you think? Seriously, what do you think? Seriously. Seriously, Seriously. What do I think? it wouldn't be wood like this is a prototype. It would be a gaily coloured plastic, maybe with some kind of laminate cover on it with zigzag. Kids would it love be nothing zigzags. like that? Well, it would be quite a lot like this. <laughs> Can you imagine if you asked for a Nintendo Wii and Dad came on with that? <laughs> There's not much you can do apart from do circles, though, is it? Yes, there's plenty you can do. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> you can do that with a normal. Sponge. With this invention, you can do this. Yeah, I know. There's... Oh, you mean another? those circles you were telling us about. But is it a circle, Lee? Well, it's, it's starting to become a circle, yeah. You think it's a circle? Wait a minute. It looks like it uh -huh. is. <laughs> oh. oh, hello. Do you know what? I'm suddenly... Oh, I'm in. Some, I am some, in. Yeah. <laughs> what would you call it? Four sponges on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Could... Rob's colourful stick. Hey, hey! Yeah. Hey, I'm not falling for this again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> what are you going to say? I've seen a lot of inventions. Yes. That's... That's not even that's an invention. Not, 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 not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be maverick here and suddenly I think it's a good idea. No, I do. It I is a good idea. It's great fun. I'm starting to look forward to actually borrowing that and playing with my kids. <laughs> what are you going to say? I say that I think Rob is mad enough to think that's a good idea and we should say that's true. You're saying it's true? David Mitchell, what is your team saying? Rubbish. You... Absolute rubbish. Do you think it's a lie? A lie. I, he's, he's mad enough to have come up with that, I think. <laughs> My instinct is that it's a lie. OK, you say it's a lie. You say it's true. Yeah. It's actually... a lie. Oh. <laughs> cool. Oh, and that noise uh, signals time's up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that David has romped to victory by seven points to five. But it's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week is Deborah Meaden. Yay! Yes, Deborah Meaden, a woman whose ability to lie is tested every time Duncan Bannatyne asks if she's pleased to see him. <laughs> Good night.